This lesson will show you how to input international characters in Windows XP, specifically Chinese characters using the pinyin phonetics. Before we can actually start writing in another language, we must first install the appropriate language packs. We can do this by going into the control panel. First click on start, then select control panel, go to the date, time, language, and regional options category. Within that, select the regional and language options task. When the dialog opens up, go to the Languages tab. Check the option to install support for East Asian languages. This includes support for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean languages, and it will require some additional disk space. Go ahead and acknowledge the notification. Then click Apply to begin the installation. You may be asked to insert your Windows XP installation CD. After you've done that, click OK to resume. When all files are installed, you will need to restart the computer before continuing. Okay, now that the computer has restarted and the languages have been installed, we are ready to configure the language bar and the keyboard layout that will allow us to type in foreign characters. Let me just first quickly go back into the regional settings within the control panel that we were looking at earlier. Alright, here we can see that the East Asian languages are indeed installed, so let's go into the details for the text services. Here we can set up all the different keyboard layouts that will allow us to input different languages. Of course, by default, there is already a US keyboard setup for the English language. We will add a new one for Chinese. First, expand the drop down for more language options. Scroll up to select Chinese in parentheses PRC, the localization for mainland China. By default, that's going to use the pinyin keyboard layout, and we will stick with that option. We can see that there are now two keyboards configured. Next, we should make sure that the language bar is visible on the desktop for us to alternate between these keyboard settings when typing. Under language bar settings, make sure 1 that it shows on the desktop, and that 2 there are additional icons when it's minimized to the taskbar. We're now done setting up text services, so let's exit this dialog. Be sure to select OK to apply all of our changes. And we'll also exit out of the languages dialog by clicking OK. I'll go ahead and minimize the control panel here so we can demonstrate some actual text inputting. OK, by default, Windows has minimized the language bar down to the taskbar here, and you can absolutely use it as is, but for easy demonstration, I'm going to restore it to the desktop. Now let's bring up a text editor to demonstrate writing Chinese. I'm going to use the standard notepad editor within Windows. We haven't done anything just yet, so we're still in your normal English mode as you can see here. Now we're going to go up to the language bar and change to Chinese mode. You can see that there are two input modes, one for Chinese and one for English. I'm going to switch to Chinese. First, uh, a little refresher, or maybe an introduction to some, on pinyin notation before we start typing. I'm going to type the Chinese phrase for hello, ni hao. The romanization for that to the Latin alphabet is ni hao. The letters there mimic the sounds and the numbers represent the different tonal fluctuations. The Chinese Mandarin language has four tones. Alright, I'll type that in. You can see that as soon as I hit the number for the tone that completes each character, the character gets generated. Actually, in the default sentence completion mode, you don't even need to type the numbers. The tool will, in sentence context, figure out the correct characters to go together. I'm going to type it again without the numbers, using just a space like we do in English to separate the words. Notice that at first, ni is a different character since we haven't specified the tone, but it changes once we type how. Of course, there are times when the sentence conversion may not be as accurate as you need it to, so knowing both is a good thing. There's also another way that the tool helps you to select the right character. If we navigate back and forth in our sentence using the left or right arrow keys, there is a candidate window that appears, which shows you some of the possible words that may have the same pronunciation so you can really select the correct one. You can change the way that this list is sorted, and you can also scroll through the list itself. Now, some of the behaviors that we've talked about are adjustable. If you go to the context menu and select properties, you can specify whether or not to be in sentence conversion mode, or if the candidate window that appears present words horizontally as a row or vertically as a list. You can also have the candidate window appear as you type always. 
we won't change anything here, so I'm going to cancel out. It's important to recognize that the language context you're in is different for each window or application. Let me show you what I mean. We'll bring up a second notepad window to illustrate this. If we click back to the first notepad editor, you can see that the language bar is in Chinese mode. And if we go to the new instance of notepad, it is still in English mode. So you need to be aware of what context you're in when working with multiple applications or windows in conjunction with the language bar. And if you do need to change context during typing, there's actually keyboard shortcuts to do that. Go to the language bar settings by clicking on the down pointing arrow. This will take us to the text services dialog and control panel. Go to key settings. Here is where you can specify the key combinations to switch between the different input languages, either by cycling through all languages in succession or by changing to one in particular. By default, there is a combination set up already to cycle through the languages and it's configured to be the left alt key plus shift key. So let's see that in action. First, I am in English mode as you can see. When I press and let go simultaneously both the left alt key and the shift key, you can see the language bar changing context. Then I can continue my typing in Chinese. This way you can rapidly switch context while you type without having to go to the language bar itself. Press and let go of the keys one more time. And of course that takes us back to English mode. Now there's one last thing before we wrap up this lesson. As you may know, in Chinese there are two forms of written characters, a simplified form and a traditional form. The keyboard we have been using is for simplified characters. You can also set up another keyboard for traditional characters. For input language, choose Chinese in parentheses Taiwan. Stay with the default keyboard layout and click OK. We need to make one adjustment to the keyboard. Go to its properties. Select the keyboard mapping tab. Make sure to choose the Han Yu Pinyin input method and that should equate to the same pinyin romanization as the simplified keyboard. Apply the selection and OK again to save text services changes. Now if you go to the language bar, there should be a new option in the drop down for the keyboard which is added and you can use it to enter traditional characters. Hopefully this is enough to get you started with inputting Chinese.